Hey, welcome back, everybody. This is part two of the Azovement of Prophecy. I'm here with Pastor Jimmy Harvey, and I just want to remind you that what Azovement of Two covers is the period of time in the middle of the tribulation. So, Pastor Jimmy, again, man, it's a privilege to be on here with you uh, and letting people watch this prophecy. Oh, I'm honored to be here and be a part of this uh, great move of God, and that's what it is. Uh, I've too long took things lightly, you know, because I didn't really put them in place, but I feel like this is of God and that people need to hear what Pastor Philip is going to say. I agree. And uh, listen, of all things that you can do is share this. Now, this is also going to be on uh, our YouTube channel, and uh, it will also be on Rumble. And if any of you haven't done that, it's as simple as typing in Rumble, just like you'd go anywhere on the internet, and uh, we can give you more information as we go along. So either myself or Pastor Jimmy will have that information. So please share it, because Pastor Jimmy, we know people are going to be coming to Christ, uh, not only now, but later uh, during during the tribulation period. Amen. Amen. I want to do my part here. Amen. So I can meet others there. That's Amen. right. That's right. All right. Y'all take a listen and you're going to enjoy a Zovman of Prophecy 2 given to Pastor Philip in Kiev back in 2007. See if you don't understand a little bit more about what God is doing right here on this earth. God bless you. Why? Has God allowed this to happen to Ukraine? Because Ukraine is the biggest Christian nation in Europe. Why didn't God let it happen to Russia or some other country where they hate God? A Zolman of two. When God gave this to me on November 11, God spoke to me one day. He says, I'm going to speak to you tonight. So I'll say, okay, um, make sure my ink pen is there and paper by the bed. I had no idea what he was about to do. So after five in the morning, the Lord wakes me up. He says, okay. So I get up. He says, no, no, no. You go to the kitchen. You go to the ki sit at the kitchen table. I'm not going to talk to you 30 seconds. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. So I go back to the kitchen, and I begin writing. Well, seven something, it was time to go to school. So I take the kids to school. And I, I didn't have paper with me. And I was trying to write on my hand and anywhere to remember what God was speaking to me. And so at 1136 that night, at 11.36 that night, God finished speaking. There's a reason for that time, 11.36 at night. I had written over 20, pa 20 pages, hand pages, and then over the next few months, God spoke some other things to me, smaller things to put into it. It ended up with 16 pages. A few days after November 11th, I shared this one Sunday morning with the church, a little, few little tidbits of it. There was a family from the Donbass who had escaped to Kiev, Andre and Natasha. And they, all of the Baptists and Pentecostal and Charismatic and, and synagogues in that area of Ukraine, all of them had seen Azovna. Every church, millions of people saw Azovna. So this family said, Andre, he came, they came to Kiev to our church. They said, we, we have fled the fighting in the Donbass. We have a home there, but we fled there. And I told my wife, if God could speak this prophecy that Russia, in 2007, that Russia would invade the Donbass and Jews would be in danger, God can speak other things to this man. We're moving to Kiev and we're going to become members of his church, which he did. And when we were leaving in 2018, a couple weeks before, he called me and said, Philip, I've got to talk with you. And he talked with me for three hours in one of our Sunday school rooms. He begged me not to leave. He begged me not to leave. I said, if God speaks to me, not in some dream, but if God speaks to me with an audible voice, or he appears to me and says, don't leave, then I won't leave. Otherwise, I have to leave. Everything God has shown me. I've cried, I cried, I don't want to leave, but I, I have to leave. My dad is dying. I don't want my son on the Russian front. Our kids need to have a little bit of an American experience because they are, even though they're born and raised in Ukraine, they do need to understand a little bit about American life. And it's different than 
you go, I'm five weeks or six weeks in America and go to 20 some churches every time in every service. I'm preaching two hours, state after state after state. That's the only thing they know of America. And we try to stop at museums so they learn a little bit about America. They need to live there a little bit. And one thing I don't want, I get older and have to move to America and the rapture hasn't taken place. I do not want my kids being married in Ukraine and I live on the other side of the ocean. I don't want it. I want them to meet some. I want them to have some kind of a life in America that they can live in America and make it financially and not be in Ukraine. So we came here on November 11, 2011. Remember, four years after he gave his opening, before Russia invaded Crimea and Donbass. God spoke to me that day. I wrote 20 more pages. I shared a little bit of, about it right after that date, and I put it away. I typed it up before we left Ukraine. I thought, man, I need to type this. And so I typed it, and uh, I put it up. Didn't, I never preached this. I can't do all of this tonight. It's very detailed. It's about what happens at the midpoint in the tribulation period. After World War III, when Russia and the United States have a war, and God gave me, see, why did God tell me the cities that are going to be destroyed? Because after the rapture, millions and millions of people are going to be getting saved, and they need to know what cities are not going to be destroyed. World War III, I know 100%, not 99.9%, .9%, I know the the excuse me, the nuclear exchange takes place on November 11th. As open to two, I'm going to give you a few highlights. Now remember, Ezekiel 38 and 39 is not Armageddon. It is World War III that takes place immediately after the tribulation period. And you've heard me, many of you have heard me, I've talked about the countries in Ezekiel 38, that will come against Israel, Russia, Germany, uh, North Africa, except Egypt, uh, 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 Kurdistan, which is the ancient Ethiopia from the book of Genesis. Last week in Texas, I was explaining about Ethiopia in uh, Ezekiel 38 is not the Ethiopia south of Egypt. It is the original Ethiopia from the second chapter of Genesis, and where the rivers... The four rivers, there was one river that came out of the Garden of Eden, and it divided into four rivers, the Euphrates, the Tigris, the Gishon, the Gihon, four rivers. And one of them to, that goes to the east of, of Turkey, it says it makes a circle around the whole land of Ethiopia. That's the original Ethiopia. That is Kurdistan. When the Russian troops come down to invade Israel, they have to go through Turkey. They have to go through Kurdistan. Turkey is Togarma, Gomer is Germany. Okay, so it gives the names of the countries, and it gives the names of the countries in the 38th chapter, the 13th verse. Uh, Arabia, Saudi Arabia is one of those. All of northern and southern Arabian Peninsula. It talks about Tarshish, the merchants of Tarshish. The name Tarshish means land of tin, T-I-N, the metal tin. The there was a Tarsus, remember Saul of Tarsus from the, the uh, coastline of Turkey. It's not that Tarsus. There was another Tarsus in the ancient land in southern Spain. But the, the Tarsus in Ezekiel 38 that will be on the side of Israel is, the, is Great Britain. It's England. Okay? okay, Tarsus means land of tin. The only metal that Rome got out of England, they got tin. Tarsus, it says the merchants, means it's a a seagoing people. And it says, with all the young lions of Tarsus. What is the symbol of England? It's a lion. England is the mother lion, the land of ten, the merchant's people. Okay? So it is definitely talking about England. It says the young lions of England will be against this German, Muslim, Russian alliance. The, who are the young lions? America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. So all of the ingredients of World War III... The last two Gulf Wars, Australia, New Zealand, England, United States, they've all been with Israel. And Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, they've all been with Israel. Just like Ezekiel 38 says, 39. All right, so 
Revelation 6, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, okay, the white horse is a personification of the Antichrist. Then the red horse, immediately there's war when he comes to power. And then we have a, a black horse, means a vast amount of death. Then a pale horse representing starvation. And verse 8, because of these four horsemen of the apocalypse, the World War III that takes place a couple of months after the rapture. We know the rapture takes place in early fall. It has to be Rosh Hashanah, the, the Feast of, of Trumpets. It represents the, the rapture of the church. The trumpets shall sound, Paul said at Thessalonians. The dead in Christ shall rise first. We don't, it's hard to know the year, but we do know, I do know the day that World War III takes place. It's it's November 11th, and we don't know what year the rapture takes place, but it has to be between November, at September 5th and October 5th because that's every year when Rosh Hashanah takes place. So one year, and I believe the, the percentages are probably 2026. In 1999, I was in Ukraine, and I hear this Jewish rabbi talking about the Jewish calendar system. He said there are three main Jewish calendars. One of them would put that, that we will be 6,000 years since God created the world in 170, 180 years. It's not 160, 70 years. He said that calendar is not correct. That Jewish calendar is not correct. There's another calendar that does, has a different time. He said there's one calendar that says, and he said in 2034, it will be 6,000 years since God created the world. Later on, I came to understand that that's not 2034. It's 2033 by other Jewish teachers, okay? So 2033 will be 6,000 years since God created the world. In 33 AD, Jesus died on the cross, 33 AD. So in 2033, it will be 2,000 years since Jesus died on the cross, the same year that we have 6,000 years since God created the world from the correct Jewish calendar. I remember in 1999 thinking, no, 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 that's 26, 27 years. No, no, I don't want the rapture. Lord, come quickly. Don't wait till 2026. But now we're 2022. We're getting very close. Azovmina is now the second phase of Azovmina is being fulfilled. The first evacuation of Kiev has taken place. The second Evacuation takes place just before the nuclear war begins between the United States and a reformed Soviet Union. Have you heard Putin talking again and again? He wants to reform the Soviet Union, the exact same thing that I preached in 2007. Let me tell you, Mike, you'll be interested in this. I got contacted last night. Okay, Kiev has a mayor, Klitschko. He was the world champion boxer. You know Klitschko? Okay, but also for the, the county... There are 5 million people. There were 5 million people in Kiev County. And there's a governor. There's a governor of the county, of the oblast. It's called oblast in, in Russia. Mike, you're going to be shocked at this. This guy calls me from Cincinnati. He, well, actually, he called me, and then he sent a message. If, is this Philip Barnett from the Azobina Prophecy? I got your phone number from Mike Harris, and I saw this Azobina back in 2007, 2009. And so he, I called him. We contacted communicated many many times a week and a half ago so Monday when I was in Houston he sends me a message I've got questions I need to ask can you call me well I couldn't call I called him back last night and I said man I was preaching in Houston it's been really busy and I didn't have time he said well he said I was talking to the governor of Kiev who's a good friend of mine the governor of Kiev five million people the governor he says good friend of mine he said he's seen your Zobina too and we were talking about a Zobina and I couldn't understand. I was asking him, Philip said that the Russian army will receive an invitation to come to, into Ukraine. And I don't understand that part. They're killing us. They're killing us. And he wrote, that, Philip, how can this be? They're killing us. Where's the invitation? And so last night I said, well, on, uh, immediately after Yanukovych was kicked out of Ukraine, he, nobody knew where he was at. He's the president of Ukraine. He goes over to the Azovsky Sea to a city called Rostov. On Don, and he ends up immediately in Moscow before their Verhovnaya Duma, and he gives an invitation. President of Ukraine gives an invitation to Russia to invade 
Ukraine and conquer Kiev to destroy these fascists. He calls them fascists. Four weeks ago, before this fighting, current fighting started, the governor of Donbass goes on national television in Russia and gives an official invitation for Putin to occupy Ukraine and destroy these fascists that are just murdering little children. And I said, those were the two invitations. They were broadcast nationally. They were before uh, the president of Ukraine gave the invitation in front of the Russian parliament. And it was broadcast to many countries. He said, well, do you know what the governor was? He believes your prophecy. And you know what he told me? He said, well, we are looking for a spy. This is right now today. We are looking for a spy in Kiev. Putin sent him a vast amount of money to prepare for this battle. And he gave Putin a big invitation. Come to Kiev. We will accept you with open arms. And so the governor of Kiev is standing up for his over, and he said, well, the invitation came from that spy. And I said, no, the invitation came from the president of Ukraine in 2000, uh, 2014 when, when he was overthrown. And while he was still president, he gave the invitation. He said, oh. And I said, could you call the governor in Kiev back and tell him that his idea, thanks for standing up, but, and that that spy that they're trying to find, we need to pray that God help them find that spy. Okay, this was last night. This was, they're looking for the spy who Putin gave a vast amount of money to in Kiev to prepare to tell where all the military installations are, what they don't know. And I said, you tell the governor, con contact him and tell him. The, to, all he has to do is check on the internet. In Russian, all he has to do, and he can see Yanukovych, the president of Ukraine, giving an invitation to the Russian parliament. And the governor, four weeks ago, of Donbass, giving an invitation. He said, yes. I said, there's nothing that's not being, I mean, the maps fit, the cities fit, everything is exact. And it will lead to World War III. The first half, because of this war in Ezekiel 38 and 39, it's the same war as in Revelation 6. The eighth verse, John said, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed him. And notice a lot of people are dying. And as they're dying, they're being cast into hell. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill the fourth part of the earth. Now, there are almost 8 billion people on the planet. Say a billion children and a, a billion people altogether are raptured. That would leave, just for math, for easy math's sake, that would leave 7 billion people. He says at the first half of the tribulation period, 1.5 billion people are going to die from the war and from starvation. 52 million people died in World War II in six years of war. But I mean in, in three and a half years, one and a half billion, one-fourth, it says it, one-fourth of the world will die. In Ezekiel, hold on to Revelation. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 39th chapter. In the 9th verse, Ezekiel 39 and 9. This is after the Russian army is destroyed on the mountains of Israel. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and bucklers and the bows and the arrows and the hand stabs and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire. How long? Why? Seven years. Because this is World War III at the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period. They won't have to get any wood out of the fields to stay warm because they will burn the weapons of fire. There's another verse here, the sixth verse, one of the scariest verses in the Bible. And I will send a fire on Magog, that's Russia, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. This is not talking about islands of the sea. He says, Russia is going to be burned with nuclear fire, and so are the islands of the world. What is God talking about when he says, so are the islands are going to be burned with nuclear fire? Go to Genesis. The Bible is its own interpreter. The pastor from Houston, he and his wife talked to me before we left, and they said, you used a phrase, Philip, we had never heard before. And we are just shocked at that phrase. It is true. And here's the phrase. 
The Bible is its own interpreter. Scripture interprets Scripture. If you never had another book ever that you bought at Mardell's or any other book about the Bible, if the only thing you ever had was the Bible, if something is not explained in Revelation, somewhere else in the Bible it's explained. Scripture is its own interpreter. Bible interpret, Scripture interprets Scripture. The Bible is its own interpreter. So what does it mean, the isles of the sea? Go to Genesis, the 10th chapter. Look what God said in the fifth verse of the 10th chapter of Genesis. Japheth, the son of Noah, for many, many, he lived, I don't know, hundreds of years after the flood. He kept a record of where all of the family immigrated to, the Shem, Ham, and Japheth, what part of the world their families immigrated to. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. God calls the nations of the world the isles of the Gentiles, the island of America, the island of Canada, the island of Germany, the island of Russia, the island of France. All of these are the isles of the nation. And God said in Ezekiel 39, these nuclear bombs are going to be burning the nations that are living so carelessly. They're turning boys into girls, girls into boys, aborting their baby. Oh, we're going to live. Whether we do right or wrong, God, God doesn't care. The isles of the nation, that's America is one of those. Living carelessly. An abomination. It's an abomination to turn your boys into girls and girls into boys. It's an abomination. It's not just sin. It is an abomination. The Carpathian Mountains are in southwestern Ukraine. And God says that many within the Catholic Church will follow the Antichrist and will cling to him, but they shall fall in Carpathian Mountains. They will lose in the fight, and they will flee to Hungary and to Austria and to Slovakia. And then shall be conflict and many shall die. And there will be great sorrow in western Ukraine. For, the follower, for, the, for followers of the Antichrist shall come like back from the west. And they it will enter into western Ukraine. And they will burn churches with fire. But God says there will be havens for true believers in the Carpathian Mountains and in the forest. And the Antichrist shall not overcome where the areas where the Ukrainian Orthodox will flee to worship their true Savior. The Ukrainian remnant in Carpathia, God says, I will surely rescue my Ukrainian Carpathian remnant. Many shall survive in Carpathia, in their dugout caves, in their positions, in their trenches of resist, resistance to not take the mark of the beast. Many shall die and shall receive a martyr's crown in Carpathia. All the wood for our church pews in our church in Kiev, all the oak pews came from the Carpathian mountains. What power does the evil one in hell have over my cherished Ukrainian and Carpathian remnant? None, I say. He has no power over my remnant, for you are mine, and I have purchased you unto my father with the price of my blood I gave for you. Will not many of you give your blood to fight for Ukraine's freedom as I gave my blood to fight for your eternal souls? Lviv will surely be the new capital of Ukraine, and Ukrainian shall be the language, not Russian. When we talk at home, we speak in Russian. I don't speak Ukrainian very well. Okay, But Ukrainian will be the new, the new language during the thousand-year millennial reign of of Ukraine, not Russian anymore. And it uh, says, uh, and much of your, uh, much land of your former oppressor, Russia, Ukrainian shall be the language of Ukraine during the thousand years. And much land of your former oppressor, Russia, uh, I will give his land from Russia into the hand of Ukraine. And what was Russian built, I will not defend. I will not protect, saith the Lord. Eastern Ukraine will be taken by, this was 2011, Eastern Ukraine will be taken by Russia. And many from Eastern Ukraine will be killed. What's going on right now? 
Tens of thousands are, going to be, are, are being killed now and persecuted. The, and the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Jews, which I drove out of the land of promise, for they broke my covenant. We broke his covenant too. America, that I made with them, they threw down my laws, and I was grieved, and I drove them out of the land of promise. And eventually, many of them came to, the, came to Poland and to Ukraine. And I scattered them to all countries of the world and didn't serve, and who didn't serve me, saith the Lord. But woe to those who raised their hands against the Jews in eastern Ukraine. God says, woe to them. Now, I'm skipping literally pages. I have to skip. I say to my beloved Ukrainians and to the Orthodox bishops who turn to me from your false traditions... As the reformers John Wycliffe in England, as John Huff in Slovakia in Prague, as Martin Luther in Germany, and many others, they turn to me from their traditions, and Ukraine will turn to me. I will fill many Ukrainians that reform from orthodoxy and worship and stop worshiping the icons and destroy your icons, saith the Lord. The Holy Spirit will lead you. Have I not spoken? Will not I perform what I have spoken to the Ukrainian remnant? My arm is not weak. It is not slack. Then I cannot perform what I have spoken. Many will betray one another. Lay aside your priestly gowns to, to Ukrainian Orthodox. Lay aside your priestly gowns and come under my robes of righteousness and my cloak of the Holy Spirit, says the Lord. Do not be deceived by the Antichrist and his great swelling promise uh, that he cannot fulfill, that he will return your missing children that are taken at the rapture because they are with me. And he talks about the Antichrist coming to Lviv, to western Ukraine. And Lviv, in Russia, it's pronounced Lviv, will be the new capital of Ukraine. Do you know that the Ukrainian government... <laughs> Okay, God says it's 19, in, in 2011, November 11th, you, that, that Lvov, and he said it also in 2007, Lvov will be the new capital of Ukraine. Do you know that the Ukrainian government has already moved most of their offices to Lvov? Already fulfilling what God said in 2007 and then repeated in 2011. The Antichrist is going to come to Lvov and he will feign, he will come and then he will pretend that he has left Ukraine but will secretly remain for a short time to organize opposition to the great revival of salvation from the throne of grace that I will send upon Ukraine immediately after the rapture of my true church. Remember, hundreds of millions of people are going to get saved after the rapture. And God says that there is a bishop, a Ukrainian Orthodox bishop in western Ukraine that is going to get filled with the Holy Ghost and is going to lead a revival of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church during the, the tribulation period, especially during the first three and a half years and in the last three and a half years. Do you know, okay, I was asked on the phone a day or two ago, why? He, and this man asked me from, I think it was California, Maybe it was Ohio. There's several churches in Ohio have been contacting me. This man asked me, why has God allowed this to happen to Ukraine? Because Ukraine is the biggest Christian nation in Europe. Why didn't God let it happen to Russia or some other country where they hate God? And I said, that's why. Because Ukraine is the most evangelized country in all of Europe. Millions of people have, in Ukraine have turned to Jesus Christ. I sent Brother Mike a video uh, last week. There was an American missionary on a bus. It was filled, packed with Ukrainian refugees. He said, and he started telling them about Jesus. How many of you would like to repeat a sinner's prayer and ask Jesus into your heart? The entire bus converted. I told this guy on the phone, eager. I said, I said, when I went to Kiev in 1992, there were maybe 20 evangelical churches in Kiev, a city of 3 million people, 20 churches, little churches. I said, when I left, we had 16 congregations in the building I passed. We had four or 5,000 just in the building I pastored every week. 
40 services a week. Millions, I said, eager millions of Ukrainians have converted to Christianity, to true Christianity. Many, many, vast hundreds of thousands are filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. I said, and the devil operating through Vladimir Putin hates Ukraine. He hates the kingdom of God, and he has attacked not Ukraine. This is a spiritual battle. One of the top American politicians, or a general, was talking this week on the news. He said, excuse me, this is not a political battle. This is a spiritual battle, good against evil. The devil who indwells Vladimir Putin, a, a demon by the name of Gog, who indwells Vladimir Putin, he knows the great revival in Ukraine. He knows millions of Ukrainians have gotten saved. So he wants to destroy the revival. What's he doing? All he's doing, you can't stop God. You can't stop God. More people are getting saved now than ever got saved in Ukraine. So the Ukrainian Orthodox bishop will lead a revival in western Ukraine. Eastern Ukraine will be destroyed. After the Antichrist departs from Ukraine, he will send many secret communiques through a communication system he will set up in a short deceptive stay as he feigns a departure from Lviv. He will communicate with those he leaves behind to infiltrate into the reformed and revived Orthodox Church that's been filled with the Holy Ghost. Beware of deceivers, for as I, as I said in the Gospels of Matthew and others, that many will betray one another and many will be deceived and will try to enter into the leadership of the revived Ukrainian Orthodox Church. We saw in the news today, eight big churches in Kharkov. Christian was telling me, eight big churches in Kharkov the Russians have destroyed this week. Ukrainian churches. They don't, they don't want the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. They hate the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. And there are these big cathedrals. Eight of them were, were bombed in Kharkov. The, uh, the Antichrist will set up this system uh, because the system of t telecommunication via satellites will be disrupted because of the atomic war that will damage the atmosphere around the planet. World War III one and a half billion people will die. The atmosphere around the, the earth will be disrupted. So he will set up a different kind of communication system with those who he's trying to get to overthrow the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Beware of false believers sent to spy out the born-again believers. Follow and hear my spirit. Be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and my spirit will reveal the false believers and will reveal their communication network and the spies that operate it that you must disrupt that network. I will help you. I will, re will reveal imposters and their secret communication system. I will keep and defend what is committed to me. My Ukrainian and Polish remnant, remember I love you always, even unto the end of the world. Your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the end of the seven years of tribulation, I will bring those that you have lost that are with me. I will bring them back, and you will all rebuild your land together. So I will take you back, and you will rebuild your burned land, and I will exp expand you to the north and east and south. The boundaries of Ukraine will be expanded. And now he talks to Armenia, and uh, he says, I, I let their... This, there was a holocaust against the Armenians that the Turkish people did 120 years ago. He says, I allowed it to happen that the Armenians would flee to many parts of the world. And the Armenian remnant, I allowed them to be persecuted and driven out to America and other country by the Turks. He says, because Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Gruzia, which is Georgia, during the nuclear war, war will totally be destroyed. And he tells the Armenians to flee to the southern border of Ukraine that they can survive because after the seven years, they will, he will bring them back to Armenia to rebuild their land. And the valley before the mountains of Ararat, valley, mountains of before the mountains of Ararat shall once again flourish and flourish as never before. In the shadow of the mountains of Ararat, under the shadow of the Almighty, under his overshadowing wings, will, your children will play once again. 
Georgia will be rebuilt, and Azerbaijan will once again be inhabited, and they will both be given a new name. Uh, Armenian children will once again play in the shadow of the mountains, in the beauty of holiness will they play, and once again sing songs to the Lord of hosts. There will be civil war in Poland. Many within Poland and within the Polish Catholic Church will be deceived by the Antichrist and will support the Antichrist. But others within Poland and within the Polish Catholic Church will oppose the Antichrist, but they will, will, will not withstand his Polish su supporters who will be supported by the Germans. Yes, the Germans will come again to Poland. Remember what they did to Warsaw in World War II? Do not forget what they did under Hitler, what the Germans did under Hitler when they came and destroyed your cities and your capital Warsaw and slaughtered the Jews within your cities and brought them into ghettos. And many Poles will die in the fighting and shall be captured. And afterwards, many shall be arrested and executed. But some Poles who oppose the Antichrist will escape into western Ukraine and will join the Ukrainian resistance against the Antichrist. Did not the Ukrainians take to the force to resist the Nazis? History will repeat. Learn history. Did Solomon not say, there's nothing new under the sun. What has been will be again. So your forefathers fled to the in Ukraine. They fled to the forest to escape the Nazis. And he says it will be again. And the armies of the West, after the smaller Polish remnant is defeated. So the civil war in Poland. Those in Poland who are against the Antichrist will be defeated, and many Poles will escape into Ukraine. And the armies of the Antichrist will press through uh, with many Poles to Belarus. And the Belarusians, Belarusians shall not withstand, but they shall surely fall before the German-Polish army that attacks Belarusia. But some Belarusians will flee to Ukraine, and others will escape to the forest to become partisan fighters. But this shall not stand, and they shall perish or be forced to flee south into Ukraine to join the Ukrainian remnant. This is all 2011. O Ukrainian remnant, be ready to help your Belarusian brothers who will surely repent, and be ready for they will bring many wounded with them, but be prepared for non-believers among them and betrayers. For surely some will come who are not true. And there will be a betrayer, a spy among them. Remember what the governor said today? There is a spy we're looking for in Kiev today. Today. I heard, uh, last, excuse me, last night. But if you seek my face, I will reveal him and his name. And he shall be revealed in time that no harm shall come to Ukraine because of his betrayal. Be prepared with medicines and care for their wounded and get them to your underground hospitals. Ukraine has to build underground hospitals in Carpathia. That you must situate close to fresh water sources in Carpathia where they, can be, where they can recuperate. Surely I will give good water and rain and, and fill your water wells and fresh air for the Carpathians, for the Carpathia to aid you in your stand. Now to Moldova. Azobna II is called, Moldo uh, is called Azobna II, but it is also called to the European remnant. Uh, excuse me, yeah, to the European remnant. So he's speaking to many nations, and I'm just giving you a highlight of details that he gives to nations. So to Moldova. Surely to you, southwest, of, uh, the Moldovans will be divided, and they are today. The Russian-speaking peoples within Moldova will flee into Ukraine. Be prepared to receive them, and they're wounded, for they will not be able to withstand the non-speaking Moldovans who will side with the forces of the Antichrist. Let the Moldovans reinforce your legions within Karpati, but beware also of those within the Moldovan forces who are not committed, who are between and seek uh, my face that they may know which Moldovans, and seek my face that you can know which Moldovans can be trusted and with weapons for security and, and what cannot be, who cannot be trusted, which have potential for betrayal. For the Moldovans will flee to you, and they will help you in defense of your southern front at the Black Sea against the attack from the navy of the Antichrist. I will send many to you, even from Russia, through St. Petersburg, which will not be destroyed, and where Moscow will be destroyed, St. Petersburg won't. 
to strengthen your western and northwestern and southern and southeastern borders. So right now, the Russians are slaughtering Ukrainians. But in the midpoint of the tribulation, they will join with the Russian and Ukrainian remnant will stand together against the forces of the Antichrist. Behold, even some will come across the sea who have survived from Turkey and beyond Turkey to strengthen your borders. Behold, even a ship will come secretly at night from North Africa with people to fight with you against the army of the Antichrist. Many Ukrainians have immigrated and will surely return and bring those who have repented with them from Germany and France and many countries throughout Western Europe, from Portugal and Spain and Italy. Be not surprised they will come to help Ukraine. You will be their bastion of hope against the Antichrist. It was on the news this week. Now listen to what God says. Many of the expatriates who have left Ukraine are going to come back to Ukraine. Do you know that as of this last week, 100,000 expatriates who left Ukraine have returned to Ukraine to fight? 100,000. This last, by the last three weeks, 100,000 from America and Western Europe have returned to Ukraine to help fight against Russia. <clears throat> Putin did not have any idea the buzzsaw he was getting ready to walk into. The devil, Lucifer, and his Antichrist will despise you, but be not afraid. He that is within you is greater than he that is within the world. Let your resolve be strong and be strengthened from your God who lives within your innermost being. That you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And in the midst of the battle, lean not just on your own understanding, but seek ye the Lord of battle, Jesus Christ, your king, who is mighty in battle to save and to lead. Look to the hills from which cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord who is at the head of the battle. Fight a good fight for I am with you. Don't be deceived to think that every nation is going to fall to the Antichrist. It's not so. When the seven years is over, there will still be millions of people around who have not taken the mark of the beast that God is going to use to rebuild the population of the world for the thousand-year millennial reign. God says, I am your leader, but I will work through my chosen leaders who I will unite together in one accord to seek me and resist the armies of the Antichrist. Again, I say to the leaders, be filled with the Holy Ghost as evidenced by speaking in the heavenly language when he, the Holy Spirit, enters into your spirit to help you know God and he will speak to your inner man. Any time in the Bible when God says north, south, east, or west, If he doesn't say north, south, east, or west of what, he's talking about north, south, east, or west of Jerusalem, of Israel. Okay, look what Daniel says in the 11th chapter, the 44th verse. The Antichrist, who will enter into Jerusalem in the midpoint of the tribulation and conquer the Jerusalem, he will set up his image in the building. The new temple doesn't have to be built by the beginning of the tribulation. It has to be completed by the midpoint. But tidings out of the east... And out of the north shall trouble him. The north means Ukraine. What is directly north of Jerusalem? Ukraine. Shall trouble the Antichrist. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly make them away. You see, when the Antichrist attacks in Ukraine at the beginning of the trip, at the midpoint of the tribulation period, the Antichrist will be defeated. That's what Azobana 2 part of it is about. He will be defeated. And remember the 12th chapter of Revelation. Okay, the Antichrist will conquer Jerusalem. In Matthew, the 24th chapter, Jesus says, when he comes, pray that your flight be not in the winter because it's going to be cold. Not on the Sabbath because no no transportation will work on Saturday. He will conquer Jerusalem. Zechariah says one-third of the Jews escape across the Jordan River to Jordan. Look what Daniel says. That's Zechariah. Daniel says, He shall enter into the glorious land to Israel, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand. Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon, that's Jordan. Jordan will not be conquered by the Antichrist. In the 12th chapter of Revelation, the Antichrist, after he conquers Jerusalem, he sends his army across the Jordan River to destroy the one-third remnant who have escaped over there, And you can look at the 12th chapter. The Bible says the earth opens her mouth and swallows the army of the Antichrist that have chased one-third of the Jews over to Jordan. He can't capture Jordan because God defends the one-third remnant. 
Now, what did he say in the 44th verse? The Antichrist, he comes into Jerusalem and he hears a bad report from the battle going on in the north for his armies to conquer Ukraine. They lose. And he hears a bad report of the, the Antichrist of his, of his army that crosses the Jordan River. The earth opens its mouth and swallows him just like it did Pharaoh and his army crossing the Red Sea. Only the army that is swallowed up in Revelation 12, the Antichrist won't be swallowed up like Pharaoh was swallowed in that battle. Switzerland. This is the most interesting of all. God says to the Switzerland remnant, who are preparing their Alp mountains for a stand against the armies of the Antichrist. For surely the Switzerland remnant will be strong. Do you know that Switzerland is a Protestant country, not Catholic, basically? It says the Switzerland remnant will be strong and overcome the forces of Antichrist in Switzerland. And Switzerland will not hold with the Antichrist or his forces or evil or the evil who worships, the, uh, the worshiping the devil. And the Switzerland remnant will also dig tunnels and prepare their mountains for defense and prepare their nation with medicines and weapons for war. And I will bring many, many from Central and Western Europe, Christians who have repented after the rapture to Europe, from Europe to Switzerland to help the Swiss fight against the armies of the Antichrist. Many who cannot escape into Switzerland will surely be beheaded for the gospel and for refusing to take the mark or name of the Antichrist. Many for the first time since the last formation of Europe will see, but many shall also die. So many will be converted and truly understand, but many will die. To the Western European Christians who repent after the rapture, because the churches will be raptured. But then a great revival, millions and millions of people will get saved. And God says to the European Christians who get saved after the rapture, Flee to Switzerland and take your stand in the mountains. I will meet with you there, says the Lord of battles. The Lord mighty in battle, who has never lost a battle, nor ever will lose a battle. I will make my enemies my footstool. Behold, I will strengthen the Swiss remnant. And many within the Catholic Church will understand in that day what, that a false, pro, a false pope has come to power and has joined forces with the Antichrist, proclaiming him God. And many leaders within the Catholic Church will flee into Switzerland for safety. And many from France and Ger Germany and some from Austria will flee into Switzerland. They, and there shall be an Austrian remnant in the mountains and hills of northern Austria who will seek the living God. And it's all remnants prepare you medicines and weapons and tunnels for the day of battle. And many from the mountains and through the mountains of northern Italy will withstand against the Antichrist. But in the end, they shall be overcome and the survivors will flee north into Switzerland. Beware that you prepare ahead of time for the defeat and prepare for the wounded and weak and feeble among you to escape to Switzerland ahead of time. Did not the Roman government slay many of your ancestors? Be not afraid. You shall walk with me and many who have died for the gospel before you in Italy, in the circus in Rome and in the Colosseum in Rome. They now walk with me in white and you shall walk with me in white. There shall be a Korean remnant, a South Korean remnant. From the time, I'm not going to go into all that, it's too much. From the time World War III ends, that's, Revelation 6, Ezekiel 38 and 39, that's the same battle. From the time it ends and eastern Ukraine is destroyed. This is 2011. What's happening now? Eastern Ukraine is being destroyed and it will be totally destroyed in the nuclear war. Till the time when the Antichrist will invade southwestern Ukraine, there will be over three years from the time that World War III takes place till the time the Antichrist invades Western Ukraine. God says there will be three years. Ukraine will have three years to prepare for the invasion, which shall surely come from the West and Southwest. Hear the word of the Lord, almighty Ukrainian remnant. I am with you, saith the Lord. Prepare instruments of war. Also prepare for a final stand in the Carpathia. For one of the reasons I have placed those mountains there is to be a natural barrier for this time, a protection for my remnant, saith the Lord. And the same reason he put the Alps there. To be a remnant, to a protection to the remnant in Europe, that not everybody is beheaded. 
Prepare you victuals, food stores to keep cool underground. Prepare tunnels for defense against the invading army that will eventually come to Carpathi. Prepare tunnels to supply crossfire on the sides of the mountains for your guns and artillery against the invaders that your soldiers can reach and assist each other and get behind enemy lines through the tunnels. Prepare systems to destroy any tunnels that are breached and accessed by the invaders from the west. Remember, you have over three years to prepare from the, the end of World War III until the Antichrist invades western Ukraine. You have three, over three years to pre prepare. Be wise. Don't be foolish. Use every day and every hour, hour wisely to prepare for the attack. In the end... The Germans will be brought in to fight with the second attack towards the end of the seven years. Remember, at the midpoint of the tribulation period, the midpoint of the tribulation period, the army of the Antichrist that crosses the Jordan will be destroyed. The army of the Antichrist that attacks, attacks Ukraine will be destroyed. Revelation 9, go there. I've never preached this before, Okay. So these scriptures are just popping into my mind as the Holy Spirit gives them to me. He won't give this to me and not confirm it with this. It's impossible. Revelation 9. I'm going to tell you something you don't probably know here. How many have heard about the 200 million man army that the Antichrist will have? Raise your hand. Have you heard about it? Do you know that that is not Armageddon? That is the midpoint of the tribulation period. Chapter 9 of Revelation. Look what it says. The, ninth, the 16th verse. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. The 18th verse. By these three was the third part of men killed. By the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone which came out of their mouths. Out of the mouths of the tanks. So World War III, a quarter of the world dies. So we're down... To, by the midpoint, we're down to four, four billion five hundred million. Now another third of the world dies in in the war at the midpoint of the tribulation, where the Antichrist has an army of two hundred million who tries to co conquer every nation in the world, and much of that army will be China invading the American remnant, the Texas and Oklahoma remnant. Two hundred million man army. It is not Armageddon. It is not World War III. It is the battle that takes place in the midpoint of the tribulation period, when Daniel says in the eleventh chapter, "From Europe, ships will come from Europe, and they will conquer all of North Africa, Egypt, Israel will fall, but Jordan will not fall because a third of the remnant of the Jews will escape there. Ukraine will, Western Ukraine will not be destroyed. Switzerland will not be destroyed. There will be a South Korean remnant." There will be an American remnant in Alabama, in Texas, in Oklahoma, in Cincinnati, Ohio. They are cities of refuge, states of refuge, just like God had in the Old Testament. Nothing new under the sun, Solomon said. In the end, the Germans will be brought into the fight with a second attack. This is Armageddon. Toward the end of the seven years. Remember, you must hold till the end of the seven years when your Lord and Savior will return. When you lose battles, and you're going to lose some battles, those who survive, be not terrified. There is hope. Those who die will receive a crown of righteousness which fadeth not away. And remember, I have your children. Those you loved and were raptured seven years earlier, they are with me. And you will be reunited. Toward the end of the seven years, the armies of Central and Western Europe will return with fury, with planes and all weapons of warfare against Ukraine. Be, this is Armageddon. Be strong against them. Lean upon your Lord and Savior. They will surely take Lvov. Lvov will be captured in Armageddon by the Antichrist, your capital. But have the women who do not fight with, and their nurses and your elderly, all those who can't fight, have them secured in northern Carpathi, in the mountains. And those are huge mountains. And I will help you to secure those mountains till the end. The Antichrist will never take all of Carpathi. Did not I, Jesus Christ, command Israel? It is not written in the Gospel of Matthew, verses chapter 24. He says, in Matthew 24, he says, flee to the mountains. He said, didn't I not say, flee to the mountains? 
So he says, Europeans, flee to the mountains of Switzerland. Ukrainians, Russians, flee to the mountains of Karpaty in southwestern Ukraine. I put those mountains there, he says, for a protection in the day of Armageddon and in the midpoint of the tribulation. Did not the early church flee to Pella before the Roman 10th Legion attacked Jerusalem? Remember this, you soldiers of Ukraine. Not everyone can leave Lviv and go to the mountains. Some will have to remain in Lviv and fight till the end and die that others will live. But remember my words. No greater love has any man than that he lay down his life for his friends. And you have a friend, my name is Jesus, who sticks closer than a brother. For surely after Lviv falls, the armies of the west will proceed to the city of Rovna and other cities further east and south of Lviv. But after the western armies attack Rivna, they will be turned back to the southwest and retreat their steps so they won't take Rovna. Rovna is the only city in Ukraine that is dominant Protestant. So much revival has taken place in Rovna. In 1923, a man by the name of Harris, he was a missionary of the Church of God of Prophecy. He went to Ukraine with another minister, and Brother Harris went to the city of Rivna, and vast amounts of people repented. And Rovna, Rivna is the only oblast in Ukraine that is dominant. There are more Protestants than there are Catholics, more Protestants than there are Orthodox. It is, and this is the city that will not be taken. You see, the a lot of the family members of those people who are saved aren't saved. They're going to be left behind. But God's, for the sake of those who are in heaven, he's not going to let Rovna be taken. And the army of the Antichrist will, will have to turn back, and they will go back down towards Karpati to try to take Karpati. And they will hit northern Karpati from the northeast and from the west and from the southwest through Zarkapati, Zarkapati at the same time. Now I've got to tell you an interesting story. In June, on June 4th through the 6th, I'm one of the founders of Life International for Eastern and all of Central Europe. Life International is the largest pro-life organization in all the world, okay? We stop abortions, okay? And I'm the founder. I started it in Ukraine. We had, had a conference. 20 countries came. People came from 20 countries. And... So we taught doctors, taught doctors and, and organizations all over Central and Eastern Europe how to prevent abortions, how to help women with post-abortion syndrome. I was in the van coming back to Ukraine from Hungary. I got in the van, and while I was driving, in my, I was driving, and there was a spider came. And I was driving back from Hungary, and I was trying to kill that spider, and the spider got away from me. And I couldn't smash him. Thus says the Lord by my spirit, the betrayer will be revealed. And God says, the first time you tried to kill that spider, you missed him. Then at the end of the tribulation period, the betrayer, later on that spider, I killed that spider. And he says, the first time that Ukraine tries to catch and destroy the betrayer, they won't get him. But the second time, just like the spider, I mean, God is speaking. I'm driving this van, and God's speaking to me. The first time I tried to kill the spider, you know, 30 minutes later, he comes again, and I killed him. And then God says, this will be like the spy in Lviv. First time Ukraine tries to kill him, they'll miss him like you missed the spider. He's a spider weaving his web. It's what God had said earlier. He weaves, he weaves a web with the Antichrist. But the second time, they will kill him just like the second time you killed the spider. God spoke that story to me. In Lvov, I won't tell you, but he gave me the attack plan of the Antichrist, what streets he is going to come in to conquer Lviv. And so I have the information to give to the Ukrainian army where to put the ambushments against the Antichrist. And see, now, because of what has happened, the people didn't believe. It's like, I'm sorry, Philip, we all believe now what you said is true. Now they can believe me. They can, the governor, the governor of Kiev says, yeah. It's true. What he says is true. So they will be able to believe. And so they will believe the military strategy that God has given. I can't give you everything in this. Just like this. He says, he will, 
underestimate the Antichrist, will underestimate. Okay, he will come, his army will come from Hungary and Slovakia to march against the armies of Ukraine. But he will underestimate my power working for Ukraine. And when he marches against Lviv, in the beginning, he and his armies will be defeated and driven back. But he and many of his armies will escape, like the spider. And then he will rebuild his army with strength from Western Europe and with many Germans and come against Ukraine a second time, Armageddon, and will overcome many Ukrainian cities. But not all the Ukrainian church, as the Israeli church and the Jordan, in the Jordanian wilderness and the Texas and the American rivers, they will call upon me and I will with anger and fury in my heart slay the armies that defy the armies of the living God. Okay, now France. The sins of France are many. Her sins shall come up before the Lord in remembrance, and God shall give her to drink triple the cup that she so vehemently poured out upon the servants of God from generation to generation. She shall drink of the wrath of God till she is drunken with her own blood, and she shall not longer, no longer thirst for blood for the righteous, saith the Lord. God is going to judge France to no end. For France and her beaches shall become a place in the end of holiness unto the Lord from generation to generation. And here's something really interesting. A young woman shall give her life in the acquisition of information for the plans of the Antichrist to attack Ukraine. Some woman is going to be a spy for Ukraine, is going to acquire the plans that the Antichrist has to attack Ukraine and she will be captured. Forget not that the Antichrist will have no regard for even women. She will give her life, and she will give the plans of attack of the Antichrist against Ukraine to Ukraine. The Western Ukrainian remnant shall be strong and do exploits. They shall do marvelous in the eyes of the Lord, for they shall walk and march in holiness unto the Lord. Their watchword and song will be holiness. And then he talks about the South African church, the jungle church, the South African remnant, which he says will be black and white people. And the Indians from India who live on the east side of South Africa will be a remnant of God at that time. There shall be a Central African remnant and an East African remnant and a Southeastern African remnant and a West African and a Southwestern African remnant and even a remnant in Egypt and even across North Africa. God says, I will have a remnant who will not take the mark. There shall be a Northern remnant in Scandinavia and in Finland. And there will be pockets of remnants in China, in India, scattered around the world from country to country. And the Texas and the Alabama remnants and the Israeli remnant that is in exile, that will be in exile in Jordan. He said these writings are accurate and true and can be trusted and depended upon in accuracy by God's scattered remnants around the world, world without end. In other words, he said the remnants can take this prophecy and trust in it and depend on it that God says there's no mistake. He says, let the surviving Russian soldiers after the nuclear war of the midpoint of the tribulation, World War III, let the Russian soldiers surrender if they will. Uh, but don't negotiate with them. Show them the full Azomina videos and the prophecy that they understand they need to fight, to live and fight again. Allow them to return to Russia through the Baltic Sea, to St. Petersburg, to, or allow some who can be trusted to fight in Ukraine. But don't be naive. The coming onslaught of the Antichrist when he attacks Ukraine from the west and southwest. Chinese will surely attack Russia from the south. In other words, the Chinese are going to invade Russia from the south across Kazakhstan and further east. The Russian Russian soldiers remaining in western Ukrainian cities will need to know that their motherland, Russia, will need them, and they should be allowed to freely return to Russia uh, to uh, not that the Russians can fight against the Chinese who will be in league with the Antichrist. Apparently, the Russians are never going to be in league with the Antichrist, but the Chinese will. Surely there will arise a brotherhood of the church of the living God in Russia, even in pockets of survivors in Siberia and in the lands from the Volga River to the highlands of central Russia. 
a zone and a two. There are many, many details I cannot share with you from this prophecy. But that gives you a basis of the remnants of what's going to take place. You see, I preached for a long, long time. May will be 50 years I've been preaching. And for a long, long time I've been preaching. It's been in my spirit. It can't go on like it is. It just can't go on day after day, month after month, year after year. We get up in the morning, we go to work, we live our lives, and year after year passes, and nothing really big changes. It can't go on forever like that. I preached and I preached and I preached in Ukraine. It started with COVID. Things have, will never, ever be the same from now until the rapture. Remember what he says. It's like a woman giving birth. The birth pangs will get closer and closer together and more and more violent. It started with, with, with uh, the, the COVID virus. Now war in Europe. This summer will probably be war between Israel and Iran. Then we're gonna, it's going to be... And when is China going to attack Taiwan? They're, they're flying over right now. Things, because of the weakness of the American government... Not, they gave up, uh, under Obama, they gave up uh, Syria. Russia is now building a massive, massive naval base in Syria. America gave up a few, couple months ago, they, three months ago, gave up Afghanistan. They're giving up Ukraine. They gave up, under Bush, they gave up uh, northern Georgia. America has become weaker and weaker because of our sins because of the sins of our nation. The apathy is pathetic in this country. The apathy is pathetic. Not realizing that nuclear war is on our threshold. And that's been the question from Russia, from Moscow. The bishops wanted to know, is this nuclear war now? And I say, no, probably 2026 will be the nuclear war. But yes, you will take, yes, you Russians, you will take even Kiev. But you won't take Western Ukraine. Your casualties are going to be so great, just like Azobman says. I didn't know how it was going to happen, but it's happened. You need to get serious about serving the Lord. I had a big disagreement with a man who hates America. This is what is taught in schools now. America's terrible. I hear the kids at school, America's terrible. This is the, the worst country in the world, Mr. Bryce. I said, no, no, this is the best country in the world. Go out and, and live for a year any other country in the world. You don't have freedom in any country like we have in this country. And we're losing it because the church is asleep. Oh, everything will be okay. You know, I, I don't, have, you know, inflation's high, but the government's going to give me money. The government's going to take care of the government. The government, the government is turned over to the devil right now. And shame on you if you don't vote in an election. Shame on you. You say you're a Christian and don't go vote in an election. Let me tell you one story, and I shared it at our church, and some of them like, they were, I was so bold at that time, they were afraid to say anything. But I said, Jesus, he told them, if a man lusts after a woman in his heart, he's committed sin. He's committed adultery, even though he didn't sleep with her. He committed sin with her in his heart. And we'll go to hell for that. And what I said to our church in Oklahoma City, sin we've got, I said, if you vote for somebody, you know that person is going to support ab abortion, and you purposely vote for him, you think God's going to ignore that? That you're putting the scalpel in the hands of that politician to murder millions of babies? You are just like the person who lusts after, after a woman in his heart. It's sin, and it's sin to vote for somebody who you know is going to commit abortion. You see... I've told people, and I tell people in Houston this week and at our church in, in Oklahoma City and everywhere I go, I've never once in my life been accused of telling people what they want to hear. If the church, if the pastors would get down to business and start preaching against abortion, against homosexuality, well, we don't want to offend anybody. I had a big disagreement with some of the teachers from school a couple of years ago, and they were talking about our homosexual brothers and sisters. I said, excuse me, there is no such thing as a homosexual or a lesbian Christian. 
My aunt is a pastor of a Lutheran church in Duncan, and she is a lesbian. What do you mean there's no such thing? I said, you mark my word. There is no such thing as a homosexual or lesbian Christian. It does not exist. They will all go to hell, and if you love them, you have to tell them that. There was a man, big Presbyterian church in San Francisco, Menlo Park Presbyterian Church, thousands of members. And they worked with us, with me and Kib. We worked, we had, we did, brought in kids, did surgery. We did everything to help kids. So, Brother Bob Arrington, his factory was right next to Candlestick Stadium in San Francisco. Well-off man. Wife's a psychologist. He's, one of the trips, his last trip over to Kib, he said, you know, I'm on the deacon board at our church. We've lost a thousand and a half, two thousand members because we, you know, accept homosexuals now. So we had a couple thousand who left, but we still have three thousand, two twenty five hundred. He said, but now we're voting. As soon as I get back from this trip, Philip, we're voting on our first lesbian pastor. And I said, Bob, it's sin. It's abomination. Your children, your grandchildren will be will be snared and brought into that you will have grandchildren who get involved with that sin if you don't stand against it and I know you've been a deacon in that church for decades and you're a wealthy man and they all look up to Bob Arrington but if you vote for that woman to be a lesbian who's a lesbian to be your pastor one of your pastors you've, God will turn against you Bob I don't know what happened he died right after that We have to take a stand. I know what interrogations are about. One of the Ukrainians last week, Christian told me the story. One of the Ukrainian leaders was captured, and they took him in. And the Russian officers, they were interrogating him. Of course, he was tied up, but they didn't understand. He had a bomb taken to his body underneath his clothes. It was, you know, a lot of snow. The, the people don't have, have, God is so omnipotent. Not so omnipotent, he is omnipotent. And they didn't have water to drink, so what did he do? He sent snow that they could melt the snow to have water all over Ukraine. The Russian troops, the Russian, uh, all of their trucks, their thousands and thousands of vehicles, they got stuck in the snow because it melted. The Ukrainian army blew the bridges that they couldn't come against Kiev. And the trucks, hundreds of them, were spinning their wheels trying to get out of the mud. And these old, old Russian tires, they blew out hundreds and thousands of tires. Blew out and got stuck for a week or two. The church is praying. I remember when war was in Kiev and we were praying. We were, I was lying on the floor. And I mean... Two, one division from western Ukraine was coming that supported democracy. Another division was coming from the south that supported Russia. And there was a, a battle getting ready to take place in Kiev. A hundred people died that day and fighting all around us. Our, our, young, our women came in that morning when we were praying. And they said, oh, Philip, oh, Philip, we passed a building just by our church to the north. And, they were, and the, the Russians supported people. They were holding the inside and all of them surrendered except three. And they burned them alive because they wouldn't surrender. These are the, the people coming to our church that Thursday morning. We are in trouble. And it is time to get over the apathy and get serious and take a stand. And preachers have to call a spade a spade. And those who don't are going to be washed out. And those who are, God will lift them up. And in the end, they will be rewarded and have great authority in heaven.